We would like to acknowledge the Gurungai people who are the traditional custodians of this land. We pay our deep respects to elders both past, present and emerging. Welcome to Balgala Residence. My name is David Hellier and my wife and I are owners of New South Wales' first cross-laminated timber passive house. I will be joined later by Knut Menden, our architect, who will explain more of the technical features of the building. The house is settled among two large Kadagai trees and neighbours a string of ironbark and lemon-scented gum trees, providing plenty of shading during the summer, but also tall enough to allow winter warmth in under the canopy. The CLT house extension is linked to a 100-year-old Californian bungalow. The extension doubles the existing bungalow's 100 square metres of floor space over a two-level structure with a new living, dining, kitchen and understair storage downstairs and a master bedroom, walk-in robe, ensuite and study upstairs. The building is clad in rough sawn black butt timber designed to naturally go silver with time. The triple glazed Dopfner windows with low E coating provide UV protection while allowing light and enough warmth to heat the building during winter without any heaters. The floors, walls and ceilings and stairwell are all structurally CLT panels installed in 15 hours with the help of a crane. The only finishing applied was a hard wax oil to the floors, handrail and balustrade. Walking into the house, the immediate feeling is of warmth with a comfortable level of humidity and then the smell of CLT walls, floors and ceiling hits you. Part of the brief to our architects was for the indoor air quality to be maintained at a higher level than our existing Californian bungalow, which is of double brick construction and gets minimal sun and felt cold and damp during winter with musty smells due to poor ventilation. We have also been renovating the old bungalow this year to bring it up to a few notches in energy efficiency and indoor air quality levels. The CLT house maintains a constant 21 to 22 degrees temperature for the three cooler months without any heating and during summer's heat waves and bushfire season, the temperature was maintained at around 25 or 26 degrees. We use a 2.5 kilowatt reverse cycle heat pump for only 30 to 45 minutes a day during the peak of summer to maintain a comfortable temperature upstairs of 23. Our study is used as a bedroom at the moment while we renovate the old bungalow. The large windows here give us a feeling of being amongst the trees and it also provides much of the heating during winter. The ensuite features Lignotrend acoustic ceiling panels and eco-core birch ply vanity and mirror cabinets around. Water efficient taps and cisterns are installed throughout both buildings. In the study and master bedroom, the window reveals a hardwood and strong enough to take the weight of an adult. External Venetian shutters are tucked in under the cladding and block out the western sun and add darkness and privacy at night time. I will now hand over to Knut to walk you through the rest of the Passive House features. Thanks Dave. So let me quickly explain the Passive House principles. So it's an international low energy design standard developed in the 1990s in Germany, scientifically proven standard, uh, provide a cost effective method, provide a highly energy efficient building with uh, high indoor air quality and much lower heating and cooling bills. Overall worldwide, there are about 30,000 passive houses, but there are less than 25 completed in Australia so far. The five key principles shown on the cross section of the Bergola house are Continuous thermal insulation on the outside of the building. Equally important is the air tightness of the building, which is something that is not really looked at in the current Australian construction industry. High performance windows, so in this case we've used triple glazing, can get away with double glazing in certain locations, and external shading, in this case we've used a retractable Venetian blind so that you can provide uh, views out when you don't have to shade the building. No thermal bridging, which means there is no, for example, steel beam that goes from the inside of the house through the thermal insulation to the outside, which can create condensation and other issues. And last part is the heat recovery ventilation, which provides filtered and fresh air on a constant level into the building. Overall, it, the benefits are about 90% reduction of the energy costs. Um, this house doesn't need any heating during winter and cooling only if it's very hot outside. Um, we've got a healthy building, there's clean filtered air in the building 
and a very high construction standard because you've got an additional Pesafel certifier at the end of the process. So what does this mean for this house? We've used cross-laminated timber as the construction, which provides, as a start, a um, airtight wall where only the joints have to be taped. At the end of the process, um, a blower door test was undertaken, which proved that this building had an air exchange rate of 0 0.4, which is a very good result. You can see the CLG structure here, and here you can see the building wrapped in the insulation and the membrane. These are the windows that were used, triple glazed windows. You can also see the external Venetians built into the facade and lowered during the day when the sun is hitting the building. For the heat recovery ventilation, we used the Lunos Next system for the lower level, which um, provides the fresh air for the building. And on the upper levels, we've used the E2 system, which is a much smaller um, decentralized system. At the end of the day, when everything's um, certified, you get this little plug, which is attached to the building and proves that this house has been certified as a passive house. I'm now going to explain the cross-laminated timber prefabricated construction method used for this project. Everyone knows about residential timber-framed installations. A lot of people know about more commercial tilt-up concrete panel systems. And uh, the CLT structure is really a combination of those principles. You have um, timber boards which are glued together at 90 degree angles, and then form a large slab which can be used for the floors and for the walls and the roof, etc. This is a time lapse of the project. The overall, the entire timber structure was installed in 15 hours. You can see here in the morning how the slabs of the ground floor are put together. And they start with the installation of the staircase, which is the part that took the longest because there are lots of small elements. The entire structure has a um, tolerance of two millimeters, which means it really perfectly fits together. All those elements are craned into place. So there's a large 130 ton mobile crane standing behind the existing house on the road, lifting it over the existing house and into the backyard, just into um, the area which is left between the boundary and the two large gum trees. So quite um, a challenging task for the crane driver, but they did a really fabulous job. You can see how quickly the installation comes together. It's a construction with very low noise levels. Um, there's not much noise when, when all of this gets installed and obviously it happens very quickly, which is a big advantage if you think about the impact on neighbors. The whole structure was completed in um, 15 hours, as I said. After eight days, all of the insulation and the waterproofing was installed as well. So that means uh, after about two weeks, all of the internal works could start, which is a very short time frame for normal construction. Just looking at some of the sustainability stats for this building, so mass timber, timber obviously stores carbon. So this project has stored about 55 tons of carbon dioxide in the project's timber. If you compare that to a standard construction, you would have used about or emitted about 20 tons of carbon dioxide instead. And that's an equivalent of taking 16 cars of Australian roads for a whole year. And the entire structure is regrown in 15 seconds. That's it from us, so feel free to ask any questions and we are more than happy to answer them. Thanks very much.